This is part four of four of growing warm season vegetables. We're going to be talking about squash, cucumbers, and beans, and also season extending and hail protection. Now let's take a look at summer and winter squash. We like to just direct seed these when the weather turns warm, and around these parts it's usually the third, fourth week in May, or even the first week in June, and we want to give them plenty of space, and that's very important. When you're planting squash and pumpkins, plant them at least a minimum of four feet apart as shown. They need full sun. The soil needs to be rich and well drained. And here you can see, now it's not a great picture, but you want to plant them in a slight depression so it traps moisture. Some people try to plant them on mounds, but then when it gets dry, the water just runs off. We also cover where we plant with a one gallon milk jug. Whether we planted seeds or we bought the transplants from a garden shop, we put these on just to protect it and also keep it a little warmer. The bottom's cut off, and notice there also is a hole cut in the top as well. Now some of our favorite summer squash is Gold Rush Zucchini. This one adds a little color to otherwise just green dishes of zucchini. And our favorite zucchini is a raven zucchini. And the reason we like this one, it is very prolific. It also grows with a more open habit, which means that you can reach in and find the zucchinis. Nothing worse than having those turn into baseball size zucchinis that you forgot to get. Another one that's a favorite of ours is Magda. Some people call it Lebanese or Mediterranean. Uh, this one's a little lighter in color and it grows just like you see here. Some people cut it in half, hollow it out just a little bit and then stuff it and bake it. It's delicious. Now when you're harvesting zucchini, make sure that it's not too old or not too small. Now the chefs seem to like the one on the right. They say that's the best size. We usually harvest ours when they're about in the middle. But when they get too old, you know, they get seedy inside and a little bit spongy. But some people like them. They grate them up and use them anyways in many dishes, including making zucchini bread. Now here are some common concerns of zucchini and all other squashes and even pumpkins. When the leaves turn powdery like this, and this usually happens in late summer, early fall, uh, that's called powdery mildew, and it can be treated. And as soon as you see it, you want to spray it with a solution of neem oil. Now do it only in the evening because it is toxic to bees if they get wet uh, when, it gets, when it's on the leaves. So when it dries, it, it apparently doesn't seem to hurt the bees at all, but it will stop your mildew right in its tracks. Next year, plant in an area that gets better airflow and don't crowd your plants because these are two things that do cause mildew, at least cause it to happen a little earlier in the season than it should. Now here are some of my favorite winter squash. Early butternut. And the reason we like this one is it has about a 10 to 15 day early maturity than just the regular Waltham butternut. Spaghetti squash is great, especially for those people that want to stay off of uh, you know, pasta that is full of carbohydrates. Uh, and acorn squash is another one of our favorites, and it comes in bush or vine form. Now when you're harvesting winter squash, here's a little tip. You want to cut it with the stem on, so you want to leave about two inches of the stem. So leave the stem on when you're harvesting. Also, if you harvest before the first light frost, eat within the first few weeks, because those are best. When squash is allowed to go through the first light frost, it tends to harden a little bit, and those are the ones that are better for storage. So the longest storage squash is when a fingernail cannot be easily, can easily cut the skin of the squash. And like I said, it's usually after the first light frost. Now squashes need to be pollinated, and they're pollinated by bees, honeybees and bumblebees, and some other insects as well. The squash has two flowers. One is a male and one is a female, which we're going to see in just a little bit. Of course, the pollen from the male flower has to be transferred over to the female flower or no squash will form. Bees again are one of the primary pollinators. Now the arrow is pointing to a male flower and notice that below the flower there's just a skinny stem and that tells you that it is the male flower. The female flower just below the flower is a swollen stem and that is where the zucchini will actually start to develop if it is fertilized or pollinated as they say by insects or by yourself, by wind. 
Now here's a picture of our granddaughter and uh, something that's fun to do with pumpkins and some squash that you're going to allow to grow is when they're small just carve their name or initials in the squash or pumpkin and as it grows that'll harden off and uh, your child will have a nice little souvenir come winter time. Now if you're planting beans you can plant either bush beans or pole beans and let's take a look at the difference. Pole beans produce over a long period of time. Bush beans produce over just a few weeks. A lot of people like that variety, like bush beans for canning because you can get a lot of beans in a very short time. And of course for canning, that's what you want. When either, uh, with either, when they start to ripen, you need to pick them every day or at least every other day. Uh, what people sometimes forget is getting out into the garden and making sure when their beans are just absolutely at their peak. Our favorite pole beans are Quintus, which is also called Early Riser. It's an heirloom. It's a little difficult to find, but if you search in on the internet, you will be able to find some seeds. And we like Kentucky Blue for our pole bean. Uh, that's a great one. It's a cross between a Kentucky Wonder and a Blue Lake, and it's got the best of both characteristics. You're going to have to build a trellis if you do pole beans. And here you can see a number of different type trellises whether they're just being, uh, you know, some, some poles that are tied together like a teepee, or if you put in some other poles and then string, uh, string one side to the other, or if you actually just buy a regular commercial trellis. But you'll need to make sure that they have something to grow up on. Now our favorite bush bean is the Blue Lake. Um, I, I don't have any other one that compares to that. We, they're just delicious and uh, they've been a great producer around here. Now when you plant beans, here's a little, little tip. Uh, you want to inoculate them with uh, nitrogen fixing bacteria. And uh, what you do with that is you just buy a small packet, it's pretty inexpensive from your garden shops, and dust the moistened bean seeds with the garden inoculate before planting. And when the season ends, leave the bean and pea roots, because you do it to peas as well, and leave those roots in the soil, because on the bottom of those roots you can see here with the blue arrow, are nitrogen fixing bacteria that are that actually take elemental nitrogen for the atmosphere fix it into a form that is soluble and is a fertilizer for the plants so if you leave the roots in there it'll be great and makes your soil richer for next year's planting now let's talk about cucumbers you see this one right here this is sweet success and it is a burpless variety now here are some of my favorites. We like Cool Breeze. It is now going under the name Quarantine. It is Parthenocarpic and Gynecious. Parthenocarpic uh, means it just doesn't need to be fertilized and Gynecious means it only has one, uh, one sex female flowers. So they produce a bunch of cucumbers and it's really tremendous. So if, if you're concerned about bees uh, pollinating your cucumbers, they're not around as much as they used to be, this is the one for you. Now on the right is Boothby's Blonde, and this one is an heirloom. And it, yeah, it's a little yellow, uh, yellow green, and it is delicious. Great for pickling, as well as the Cool Breeze. Cool Breeze is great for pickling or eating fresh. And then the one on the bottom is Sweet Success. It is a burpless variety, which means it just has fewer seeds than most. Now let's take a look at some tips for cucumbers. You want to plant them in rich, well-drained soil and in a slight depression, just like you did your squash, so, so it'll be able to uh, you know, capture whatever moisture is there. So you make the slight depression just about an inch or two lower than your soil around the edges, uh, about 18 inches, and then plant your seed in there. You can direct seed these or buy your plants from a, a garden shop. You want to space each depression or seed at least four feet apart because they will grow in vine and they need that space to do that. Now you want to harvest your cucumbers when they're ripe. Nothing worse than, than a cucumber that's gone too long. Um, and this is quarantine or cute cool breeze as, as we call them. And this is one day's harvest as you can see on the left. My wife is harvesting those off of just two plants. Now we use a cover as you can see on the right to keep them a little warmer. And that is just row cover cloth uh, put down over those uh, cucumbers. And it is porous so the rain can get in and um, keeps them a little warmer. And of course, my wife loves to make pickles of all sorts and relish, and they're just delicious. Now, some common c concerns about cucumbers is, what if they grow deformed? What, what, what causes that? Well, it's either inconsistent watering, you know, wa wet then dry, or it's incomplete pollination. They just didn't get to it. But if you plant Cool Breeze, which doesn't need a pollinator, 
you shouldn't have to worry about that last concern. But make sure you do consistently water your cucumbers because they're a heavy water demander. Yes, we get all those. We get wind. We get it very hot and dry. You know, we get hail. So, you know, you want to protect your plants. And here's one way that we do it. Just, just think about this. How can you keep them a little warmer and protect them from the elements like wind, heavy rains, or hail? And, uh, of course, containers over the top work. Now, these are some old uh, cooking oil containers that we got from a, um, a restaurant. Just cut the bottoms off, drilled some holes in it, kept the top off. And we set them on top of things like our broccoli. When we buy our broccoli from the local garden shop or if we uh, grow them from seed uh, inside and then bring them outside, we want to protect them for a while until they get their, their roots down firmly in the soil and the weather stabilizes, which usually is around the latter part of May or the first week or two of June. Now here's another one of those uh, covers that you saw before. You can see underneath that we just use reinforcement, uh, concrete reinforcement wire. It comes in, in uh, three and a half feet by seven foot sheets from your local hardware store. We, we pull it uh, down and uh, you know tie it to a frame like you see and then put 30 ounce weight row cover cloth on top of that and um, it really does a great job and it's porous so it allows the rain and, and you can water right through it but boy it really does a great job of keeping things from the elements. Now if you don't want to go to all that trouble uh, we've talked about it before wall of waters can be used. You fill the tubes with water the water warms during the day and the plants are kept warmer during the cool nights and here you can see a tomato plant that was planted inside. Now here's a little tip. When you're filling them with water and before you plant a plant inside there, we take a five gallon bucket, invert it, put, turn it upside down, and then put our wall of waters, uh, uh, you know, just, just slide that over the top of it. Now they don't have water in it so, you know, they would fall down otherwise. And then we take a hose and just gently fill those tubes. And then when they're all filled, it'll stand up by itself and then we just pull out that five gallon bucket and then we plant our tomato plant or pepper plant or broccoli or whatever you want um, inside those tubes and and we keep those on until the weather stabilizes again about mid-June or so and then we just uh, lift them up over the top and they sh your plant should be fine. Now with our tomatoes we'll probably have to stake them once we pull that off. Now here's some kohlrabi that we had planted on May, that it planted earlier about a month before and we put uh, containers over the top of it with the whole bottom cut off and this is them on May 16th and here's some broccoli that was the same way it was covered until that date May 16th we pulled that off to take this photograph now if you want to do some hail protection the many of the local garden shops uh, sell this hail and cold protection cloth and it works really well and here you can see some other pictures of it as we've put it over and we use sometimes use buckets and things and to put over here's corn that was covered with an anti hail cloth and it did really well this just shows you some more here. And you can use these. Now here's the last tip we're going to use. If, if, you want, if you're planting out spinach and carrots and stuff, um, use burlap uh, to get these small seeds germinated. You know, moisten the soil and then put the burlap on and moisten the burlap. And you peek underneath it every day to see when they germinate. And when they do, you remove the burlap and your plants will have gotten off to a good start. Now it's important to mulch. It keeps the moisture in, helps prevent the soil from forming a hard crust and keeps the weeds down and it moderates the temperatures and moisture level fluctuations. So we like to use uh, mulch whenever we can. And here you can see when we want to plant our corn for example we just move the mulch aside and plant the corn right in between there. Well that's it everybody. Thanks for watching and uh, for ongoing garden information visit our garden blog at thegardenfather.com. Happy gardening!